All right, good morning, everybody. Let's start with today's webinar. Uh, again, thanks guys for taking the time to join us today. My name is Ken Miguel. I'm here with Mike Lugo. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ken. How's everybody else doing? Things going fine. All right, so we're gonna be covering the BN 2600 ECTC body temperature uh, access control camera. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different from our last webinar. We're gonna go over more of the advanced device setup, all the settings in the camera menu, as well as the VMS software that come packaged with the camera. Um, so we get, if you guys are wondering uh, or already bought one of these units, this is gonna be super helpful for you. Uh, you'll be able to understand you know, all the steps on how to set it up. Um, it'll, be, it'll be very, very good. All right. So I think you guys uh, joined our webinar today for a reason. You guys probably already kind of, you know, have an idea of what this product does, but it's a a fast automatic body temperature reading camera. So you know, a couple of benefits in using it. Uh, one would be, you know, restrict access. So you can put this by a door. It's weakened 26, Mike. Um, uh, supports weekend 26 and also has alarm contacts. So in this case, like you see on that slide, you know, somebody walks in front of it, they read normal body temp, it will let them in. No sound. Are you, are you, can you guys send us a message if you can hear us? Okay, well, we're just gonna proceed. Um, if, if, if you're, uh, okay, there you go. If your body temperature is normal, it can automatically unlock that door. If a, a business or a, a facility requires you to wear a mask, then if you're wearing a mask, it can, it can let you in. On the other end of things, if, you're, if your body temperature is abnormal, it will keep the door locked. Um, also in notify management or whoever will be getting notifications that there's somebody trying to enter that's not supposed to. Okay. Guys, there's a questions box there on your screen. We got to mention if you have any questions, feel free to type it in. We'll answer it as we go along with the webinar. Okay, so we get this question a lot, Mike. Um, do I need to connect this device to the network? or can I use it as a standalone? Um, you can use it as both, either one. Um, we've had many projects using this device that they're not leaving it connected to the network. So pretty much uh, you can have it wall mounted or on a stand like this that we also carry. Uh, it comes with a power supply, so you can just leave it powered. Keep in mind it's not PoE, but you can just leave it powered and just have it be automatically taking body temperatures of everybody walking up to it. Um, it stores everything in, a, in an inter, internal SD card. So all that information is still being recorded. Um, and you can retrieve that, retrieve that information later when needed by connecting it to a network. Um, also, you can, use it, you can use it connected to the network at all times. So this enables you to keep a uh, database going, start a database, add faces to the database and retrieve information from this database. Uh, we're gonna show you guys all the settings that you, you can set for it to do, uh, but you can use it both as a standalone or as a network device. Okay, a little bit about the, about specs, I'm not gonna dig into this too much, but it's essentially, it's a 1080p camera, uh, four millimeter lens, 
the key here though is see that that piece above the the tablet that square piece that has a bolide logo that's the thermal sensor um and this is where the quality really comes in this is a german so we, we partner with a with a german uh, company um Heyman thermal sensors um best in the industry and that's the reason why our camera the temperature readings only take half a second they're accurate to over and under half degree um and especially putting this in a in a high traffic environment if we're going from one person to another is really fast and uh, it's one thing to experience it but it, it's it's a really accurate and fast scanning device here's a little bit on the hardware And let's answer a couple of questions. Is a stand mount uh, included? It's not included. It comes with a, a wall mount kit. If you need a standing bracket, you would need to purchase that. The software has a price or does it come with a terminal? It's free. So soft, VMS software is free. All the firmware updates for the camera, we keep making uh, improvements to the firmware that's all going to be free there's no after you buy this unit there there are no costs in the future for anything software or firmware related the stand is called a pole but it is the same as show. so the the picture that i showed you is the standing bracket Is the product in stock? Uh, yes, the the product is in stock. Okay. So going back to the question of the mounts, so we pretty much have two mounts. One is that standing bracket, and another is a desktop bracket. Um, just keep in mind, the desktop bracket would need a different variation of the camera. It's a pole mount uh, back camera. Uh, same unit. Uh, just a little bit different uh, case, but it is required if you're buying the desktop bracket. Uh, if, if you're using the the standing bracket, uh, then you you just buy the regular BN2600 ACTC version, and the price is the same for both versions. So we had another question about the alarm output. Is it always open, always closed? So yeah, it's field selectable. You have the option to have it always open or always closed. Yeah. And how is it wall mounted? There is a kit that comes included. It's essentially uh, a plate with four screws and there's pieces that connect to the screw onto the camera and then it would slide onto that wall plate. How far do people need to be? Three feet, maybe closer, but I'll, we'll show you guys. Um, but it does a whole lot you know, and you'll find out Number one would be the body temperature checks, the weekend integration, unlocking doors, turnstiles, or alarm contacts allow external alarm devices, and also can unlock uh, doors. Uh, there's face attendance that uses facial recognition that essentially turns this machine into a time clock. Uh, you got most of you guys are security dealers. Uh, you sell this to you know most likely going to be a business a business owner um they're going to be interested in, in using this to monitor their employees what time they clock in what time they clock out what time they leave the, the office and whatnot okay so mike so we're gonna we're gonna now start streaming the let's show the device first what do you want to do mike yeah, let's jump right into it. Let me pull this up on your guys' screen so you can see it. Turn on the uh, camera. Yeah. So where is my? Here we go. All right. So here's our interface. Um, let's, let's show it working first. So let me turn my thing around. My webcam. Give me a sec.
Okay. Can you open that? Well, let me show them the process of adding it. Add device. You guys can see I have two devices there. I'm going to go ahead and add this. Now it's on my software. So go to my preview, pull it up. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to. Please wear a mask. So we have the mask protection on. Okay. I can always go. Please wear a mask. Off. So we have the mask feature enabled. Now I'm going to close it, save it, grab the anchor. Please wear a mask. Oh, not save it, I'm sorry. Temperature normal. I don't know. Please wear a mask. Okay, so that's the normal. temperature reading. Yeah. You want me to go up to it again? Yep. Okay, so now I'll do it without the mask. Temperature normal. Okay. So using it as a standalone. Pretty much you can do that without connecting the camera to the network. To the right? network, right. So the times you would need it on a network is if you want to obviously use the CMS, you can have it on a private network always, of course. Um, I recommend having it on a network because you can just do more things, have more inter interactivity with it. Um, yeah. So let's go as well. Okay. So okay, so this is the CMS. Let's let's go back and we need to go over the camera. What, right? what you're doing. So there's two ways to to interact with with this camera. One would be of course the web GUI. The second would be the VMS. Let's go interact with our web GUI first because that's where you're going to make most of your setting changes. Okay, so I buy this camera. I want to access the settings. I connect this to the network. Yeah. Treat it like an IP camera, right? Treat it like an IP camera. You'll come on okay, to this screen. Then here. we'll need to log in first. Yeah. So actually, let me log out and show you guys the whole process from start to finish. Exit out of this whole thing to do. So close that. Okay. So what IP address do I type? So by default, it's going to come out of the box 192.168.1.88. So you will have to set your computers to uh, this IP scheme. That is the that is the default IP address of the camera. Default. Wait, the mic's not done. Okay, so you you get this login screen. Mm -hmm. What is the default password? So admin is your default password. Admin username, admin password. Okay. So. Okay. So there's the first thing that you're going to see. First thing you're going to see basic information about the camera. Um, User management. We went over most of this in the last webinar. Okay, go to system info first. Okay, so do any do do if, if somebody's buying this out of the box, is there anything changes that need, need to be no. done here? Yeah, no okay. changes need to make. Okay. Every other box, you're ready to go. The only change you might need to make uh, would be Fahrenheit or or something. Let's go. Let's go. Um, okay, system time. Yeah, you can set it to. Well, make sure make sure make sure that you that you guys change uh, change the date and time. Um, that's crucial. We've seen guys uh, not adjust the date and time, and yeah. your searching will be off. So just make sure that you make this correct first. So a few questions. Can we change the voice message? No, uh, not currently. Is that Wi-Fi? No, this does that. This has to be hardwired. Um, it's a security device. Wi-Fi, you know, much like IP cameras, you know, they're, you're not getting a consistent connection at all times. 
can you use an RFID card reader to be used as a facial recognition? You can use them in conjunction together. Um, yeah, you can use them together. It wouldn't be as facial recognition, but you would have to pass both, have the RFID and the pass the face matching. That's how we go. Okay, let's move on to the next menu. So this is a, this is a real important menu. Uh, you notice I logged on 192.168.1.8, and that's for us here. That is not our network, so I had to change my computer to something that's similar. You're going to want to change this address to whatever your network scheme is. Uh, it might be 192.168.2. Dot something. Um, so it's real important once you get into the camera, make sure it's part of your network. Um, if you do enable DHCP, make sure you have a network scanning tool so you can find out what the address is. Because if you put it on DHCP and you don't know what the address is, you're going to be caught up in a situation where you're going to have to find that address and you need a network tool. So real important. Try to keep it static, most likely. Um, yeah, basic information, subnet mask, your gateway, which is your router, and then your preferred and ultimate DNS. Okay, next. So this is... Steve, nothing really happened here. Yeah, so this is a future... Um, mobile access that we'll be having in the future. So that's already there in the GUI. Okay. So what is smart face? So this is a really important um, menu to go to. By default, everything is ready to go out the box. You don't have to make any changes. But there are some instances and in some cases where you might have to make some changes. So this is facial recognition settings. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so most importantly um, would be you see this human detection open, close, and these all three of these go in conjunction. Um, these are 2D device facial recognition. So the software is able to compensate for that and be able to tell if it's a live person. Um, instead of using the 3D facial recognition, you can tell it's a live person and it, you can't use a picture or try to get in you know, that way. So it's, it's pretty cool that you have this option. So if you're selling this, a customer may ask you, what if I put up a picture from a magazine or from a phone, right? Yep. A face, yep. will it match it with? Yeah, well, it will see it as a, a real face. So these, these options here will allow you to only have real faces be detected. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, everything out of the box, most likely, that is even on by default. So you don't really need to enable that. It's already on. But so this is all your face detection um, settings. The next menu is equally as important, if not even more. So this is going to tell the camera how are you detecting, or what are you detecting? You're detecting faces, temperatures. Let's go on the field here, actually. So ID, we had a question about um, RFID. So you can do the RFID face and temperature. Um, you can do just the whitelist. You can do um, a series of combinations of how you want to let people access it. Yeah, so you can do uh, detect by face. So face face recognition, temperature detection, um, ID, right? Yep. ID card uh, reading, um, or, or different combinations of all. Yeah. Also, right below that, you'll see the uh, mask detection. So in today's times, everybody's wearing masks everywhere they go. This is a real cool option. It will detect the face, and if you're wearing a mask or not. So you can have both. It's going to detect your face, know who you are. And if you're wearing a mask, it's not just, you know, are you wearing a mask or not? That's pretty, um, pretty important, pretty cool. Um, so you don't have to change again. The only thing you have to change here would be Fahrenheit to Celsius, depending on where you're at, where you're using. You can adjust the threshold, the temperature at which it's going to set alarms off. By default, it's 99.1. Uh, different states have different regulations of what um, that minimum requirement is. So we get asked a lot, how, how is it really reading your temperature? Where is it taking temperature from and does it need to be calibrated? Yeah, a lot of those questions. Uh, and so I think Ken mentioned earlier that we use uh, German IR detection. It's not um, thermal. So no, it does not have to be calibrated. For what, why, why is that? Because it's an IR sensor. It's not the thermal temperature, which, you know, temperature fluctuates. The IR sensor will allow you to get accurate temperature off your skin. So it's, for this type of device, it's, the way to go. Okay, so that's the so, black and white settings. Yeah, for access control. This is where 
their reading gets gets enabled, where it gets disabled. Um, there's a couple of features on the camera itself, like so it has two lights on it, um, and the screen itself. You can have the screen turn off, you know, after a certain amount of time, or you can have it on 24/7. You have that option. Um, temperature mode. You can do a more precise temperature, or you can do a quick temperature. And by default, we want precision. We want to make sure we're not missing any, getting any false readings. Um, of course, your time and date. So this is another important uh, option here. So we've had a lot of customers that say that they, the new law is that they cannot save um, pictures in their database along with temperatures. So we've enabled a function that allows you to only save certain information, right? So you want to save just temperatures, but not faces. Uh, that yeah. seems to be really important now. Yeah. Thanks for talking. Yeah, I think uh, I've talked to a couple customers in certain states where they say that you cannot have any faces. So this is going to allow you to um, choose what you want to save. Can this camera be placed outdoors? Uh, it's IP54 rated. It's not completely weather rated. So you, you can put this outside, but it still needs to be a somewhat of a controlled environment. Um, you cannot get soaked in rain. Um, so and you would need you would do you would need to protect it. Um, so it needs to be in a, a covered area um, if you're going to place it outdoors. How does it alert the person when being scanned if they're over the body temperature? Okay, so that's one of the things that we want to show you guys for this webinar. We're going to show you uh, email notification and how to set up the alarm output. Okay. We'll, co we'll cover that as we go along. So device information, you can see this is blank. This is for a future future software coming along, which can allow you to uh, have multiple devices and know which is which. So that's okay. there. Um, restore, this is going to restore factory settings. You can restart the machine. Uh, remotely, some um, device settings. This is just basically the internal hard drive. It comes formatted, so you don't really have to mess with that too much. Everything's going to stay in there. Uh, audio parameters. This is another important um, option. A lot of customers do not want the machine, uh, you know, talking out loud or someone had a high temperature or stuff like that. So you can adjust the uh, volume and, of course, certain uh, audio compressions. If you're saving that video, this is what you do. But there's no intercom system no, no, built no. in here right now. Yeah, not right no. microphone output. Yeah. yeah. Or speaker output. Speaker output. Uh, DDNS. We've added DDNS tab. I'm not sure. I haven't seen no customers actually using this function, but if you need it, it's there. Uh, UPnP, universal plug and play. This is for your routers. Um, most routers nowadays, most devices nowadays, come with this option enabled. This is something that maybe customers don't want to have um, on the on the internet. So you would just keep this disabled unless you actually go and enable do some port forwarding. It's not going to be online. So that's, that's such another security feature. Uh, so basically, this is another important menu. This is port information. So if you do want to have it online, these are the ports you need to open. Have you noticed there's an Envoy port? Has its own separate port. Usually we use, or usually Omvip uses 80. You can see we have to use 2000. You can change that to 80 and change the web port if you want, but this device has its own Omvip port. Keep that in mind. And then, so finally in this section, emails. This is a very important, very, very important option. Okay, so we, we, want, to, we want to cover instant notification. What, hap what happens if somebody comes in with a high temperature? What, what, what do they get? On, what, what kind of email are they going to get? Let me go over to my email. I'll show you guys. Just over. There we go. So this is an email notification. It's out of many, many. Okay, can you open up one? Yeah, so this is one here. So you're going to get the name, the type, you're on the whitelist, if you're wearing a mask, temperature that he gave, um, time, and date. And then we'll go through a few other ones. So I had there's another one, wearing a mask, tells me so. Um, all the information you would need, you're going to get. Wearing a mask. 
Um, there's some other people in there. Um, so yeah, you're gonna get all basic information. Um, you can set, let's go back to that. We're gonna go over the email setting after we show the actual email. Okay, uh, we have a question, email, no indication at the unit for the person being scanned. Okay, you, if you scan in your abnormal body temp, it's gonna tell you if your temperature is abnormal and it will be in red. Yeah. So it, like, it's audible. Like I mentioned earlier, the audio settings, we've got customers that don't want it, you know, yelling out into the public, you have a high temperature, so you're able to disable that if you need to. Okay, so we had a question about email setup. So how do you set up the email to work like we showed? So here we go. First thing you're gonna do is who do you wanna send the email to? Make sure that this is a separate email from what it's sending. Um, real easy, just put the email in there, whatever your service is. You have a few here, or if, you have, if it's other than these four, you just go ahead and type it in. So this is a recipient? This is the recipient. Okay, how many recipients can, One recipient. can you add? One. Okay. One recipient. And so binding email is the one that's gonna send it out. I click that there. Um, you can see I have some basic information in here. Um, so this is all of your emails providers SMTP information. So it's going to log into your email and send the email out. So you need the service, the username, the password. You can title the message however you want. In this case, we have a uh, alarm message. You need your SMTP port, really important. And then if it's SSL or not, you make that check mark. So this is, this is all. Um, provider server side information that you get from your email provider. But last, so we have all these different um, ways to send email. High temperature, if someone's without a mask, if it's just a guest, or if it's someone on the white list or VIP list. So for all of them, you have the option of doing these um, specific emails on how you get your notifications. This is where you're gonna do it. If he, if he needs to go to multiple people, then you just set up an email that's shared, right? Yes. For, for yes. the for the uh, sender email, does it have does it have, what is there are there specific? Does it have to be Gmail or it can it can it be e any email? No, yeah. So you have these ones here. The only one here that we typically use is Gmail. But if you hit other, um, other will get you any email you want. You go ahead and type the email address out. As long as you know the SMTP information, you're good. And the email route and sent through custom email server, and does it support TLS security encryption? So it only supports SSL. Yeah, SSL right now. Can it run on PoE? I have now what is power requirement. There's no PoE. The camera runs off a of 12 volt, three amps. Yes. And the power supply already comes with it, but it's 12 volt, three amps. No PoE on this one. Yeah, no PoE. Okay, so that's that's email alerts. Email alerts. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about alarm open or closed? Awesome. So alarm open and closed. That's going to come back over here to our. So why why alarm. why are we covering alarm open or closed? Because you can have, you can you can connect the hardwire this to an alarm device. Yeah. So basically, what it is it's a relay. It's a relay that's going to be able to trigger either your. Your alarm system, you can have it you know, open doors, close doors. If you're not using a Wigan um, access control protocol, you also have an alarm output to, to use instead. And it's very simple. We talked about earlier about it being open or closed. You have that option. Um, so you, you go here and you go to alarm switch. Alarm switch, just make sure that's on. And then you have the option to do always open, always closed. Um, yeah, and then, you know, we also have here, is it sent to the pulse output or is it do this continuous output? Um, those are your options for your input output. Pretty typical, that's the way it goes industry-wide. Um, yeah, very simple to, to connect. What, one of the main questions that you're gonna get selling this stuff is, I need to know, or who we need to know right away, right? So they can they, they still need to act upon an abnormal temperature yes. reading and whether they can further test the person or isolate them. 
but these would be the two best ways. Yeah. That's a good topic that Ken just brought up too. So, you know, you have the option you see here, abnormal temperatures opens the door. Um, situations where you might need to let somebody in anyways, even though they have a high temperature because they need to get a second reading. Uh, and a lot of places are doing that now. So this option allows you to record the high temperature, let them in the door anyways, and get their, their second temperature. Okay, so that's pretty much, that covers the, the parameters part of the, this is the uh, browser GUI, right? The browser GUI, yeah. All right. Next up, we'll, let's look at doing, starting a database, uploading pictures. So there's a few ways to do this. Um, through, so this is, we're doing it through the browser. Right? Through the browser, yeah. There's a few ways to do this. The first and I wouldn't say the easiest, but the fastest route would be comparison. List. So comparison list is going to show you everybody who's came through this camera. Go to search. You can see a bunch of different pictures. So if I want to enter someone into the database, for instance, myself here. So it has me as guest. I can double click that, add myself to a list. My information, give myself an ID number. You know, you have the option of phone number or or ID card number, the same. So ID number is required. ID number. So you need to give them, give whoever an, an ID number. You have to give them an ID number. And I'm going to show you guys how to load individual pictures with all that information already in. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so this is doing it from the camera that has seen faces, right? Pretty easy to do. Click it, enter the information. Now I want to see if myself is there. I can do a search. You have a couple of different ways. So that's under list? Under list, yeah. So there's a list of people that, I, that are in there now, right? So I'm going to go, I'm going to do a fine. Uh, I have to enter myself here. So, but there's my information. Um, obviously, there's two of them, that's fine. Um, yeah, there's my list. You can tell me everything, everybody's on there. Male, female, has all the cards, card numbers. So how do you, how do we, how do you go to a history of a person that you have on the, on the database? So same as I can do a search here, over to the right. I can do what type of, of search am I doing now? So am I doing whitelist, VIP list, what list are they on? What, male, female, and access control card number, so which is an ID number. I can search by ID number, see how many people came through. That's one way to do it. I can also do it through attendance, right? What's attendance? I can talk to you about before. You can use this as a time clock. So I'm going to do a search. So there's, every, there's a few people with a couple pages, but so here's attendance. You can tell me how many times I was there, how many hours I worked, what time I came in, what time I left, um, information like that. And we, there's also more information when we get to the VMS, when we get a little deeper into it. So this is a quick way of accessing these features from the GUI. Okay. So let's, what if I want to add a bunch of people? Right? Or let's say, or adding, let's add, add a picture that's already been saved. More well, pictures already been saved. Would you need to do it from the browser or from, from the VMS? So I can do it from the browser, add list, right? Choose a file. Let's see what I have. So what page uh, did you click? So before you, when you click. Yeah. So same. List. So under list. Under list. So remember, list is where your people that you have in your database are. So you want to go to lists. You're going to add to the list. Choose a picture. All right. So I have a bunch of different pictures here. Let me choose a random picture. There's, there's my picture. Give her a name. So picture size needs to be 960 by 960. By 960, yeah. Or, or smaller? Yes. So let me actually let me go back a little bit. So if you notice, there is a, all these pictures here have a certain way that they're named. Right, so here, here's how it goes. So the, the name goes first, underscore, right? then an ID number. Then if it's a male, you put one. If it's a female, you put two in that order. And it'll fill out the information for you when you do a batch upload. But as you can see, I chose the picture, I already had her name. Um, for single pictures, you still gotta go and enter this information. 
by yourself. But on a batch upload, it's going to load this information for you. So it's easier. I'll get to the batch upload in a second. Um, what else do I need here? So, you know, it's about this. No. Right, now she's in there. That was a, she's already in there. So though, but that's for one picture. Now let's do a batch up. You're going to switch over to the VMS? Yes. Okay, let's back up first. Um, we have to explain what this VMS is. Yeah. So if you're managing, especially multiple devices, the live streaming will be done on the VMS as well, right? Yep, correct. And managing multiple devices in terms of what Mike showed you. So if, if you need to make setting changes for, let's say you bought five of these cameras, where would you need to make your system settings? In the camera menu or the VMS? So everything's going to be done inside the camera menu. So the camera menu, right? Yeah. The VMS is going to be for viewing, batch uploading, exporting, um, things like that. Yeah, so the beauty of it is, is a, it's a free software, and if you need to, you said upload uh, batch pictures, then you you would just need to do it off of one platform. Okay, so let me open this up. Look at it. There we go. So by default, you load it. Um, you don't need to change your password. Just hit login. Um, we have a few customers that try to put a different password at this point. Later on, after you change it, then you could, but after the install, you just kind of go right into it. Okay. So that's the first thing that you see? Yeah, the first thing you can see, you see that there's some big words on the screen. Um, this is for temperature, um, people coming in, people coming out. All these numbers you'll see here, and you'll just light up. But we are going to go, first of all, let me show you live preview, right? There's a live preview. Let's show, so I'm going to walk in front of it, yeah. take it scan, and show them where it displays my temperature. Yeah. Right now. Temperature normal. Awesome. So, temperature normal. You can see down here. Has a picture of him, his temperature. I haven't entered him into the database yet. So on the right side, you would see him here. But since we haven't added him yet, it's just going to give him his temperature. Um, there's a live picture. You've seen that it, what it does. Go back to our, so here's our main page. And you see this a few different, let's see here. Go back to that screen again, or you're only showing a part of your screen. Yeah, it's only showing a part. Smaller. That makes a difference. Okay. So. Okay. I don't know what's not coming through the full screen, but so you can see that there's some some icons here. Um, home pages where we were. Are you able to fix the share screen? Just flip it back from one screen and go back to it. Yes. Okay, so they can see the whole. Take a second. Close out of the Okay, there. Can you guys see that? Give me a thumbs up. So there we go. Now we can see the full screen. So okay, let's do it again. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in front of the camera again. Okay. Temperature normal. So you can see again, just like we did before, there's his temperature. Temperature normal. Face. So now we're going to go a little bit into more of these menus. 
keep in mind that what we see on the screen. So we see eight icons. First thing, before that, before you, you need to get the camera on the software, right? So we go to device manager. There are my devices. I think I added one earlier. You guys see me add that. Um, very easy to add. It's going to do an auto scan. It's going to find it. You just add device. Okay. Once you add device, then we can do the preview. We went through that. But what we want to do is do our face, our face stuff here. Uh, Mike, sorry. Um, uh, we have a question here. How many? So how many devices can you can this match to? So you have as many devices on here that you want, but you're maxed out at five. How many can you see uh, on your li uh, live so, preview? So your live preview, you have four screens of four. You can do up to 16 oh, screens. 16, 16 cameras. So okay. with that switch, and now you have 16 different cameras. It doesn't do a, a uh, I can double click it and make it one, but it doesn't have one on that on that list. Um, OK, what do I want to do? I want to search for some faces. Well, actually, no, let's continue with our uh, importing. If I go to my list, right? This is my import list. What do I want to do? I want to import. And from here, you can upgrade a yeah, file, select a that. folder. So I'm going to select a folder. I'm going to do my desktop. Anyways, right? So I can import. Temperature normal. Uh, picture normal. This is where I would import pictures. Um, the temperature measurement failed. Recheck I can the temperature. Also do, I can also do individual pictures. Uh, I can use the information here that I need. Picture. Random characters. There we go. So it's imported. Now I want to see that imported picture. Down here, select the camera, search. You see on the bottom there's a, a uh, timeline. I'm going to add him to this. There it is. So there's everybody that has scanned this camera today, plus the one I imported. So I can see all my, everything on my list if I want to change to a VIP list, which is the same, a little different, no zero. But this menu here is most important for exporting. You know, we want to export who is in our database. I uh, want to be able to save that information. And so there's three exports, this is going to be the first one. I want to export this here. Save it on my desktop in I think I need a folder right here. And I'm going to select this folder 100%. So pretty much done. So why are you exporting these files? So this is just information that I want to keep for my my records. I want to know what person is matching to what face on what ID number. Um, what list they're on. This is all for your records. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the first list. Um, second list you can do is a attendance list. Let me do this camera because it has a little bit of information on it. Search. So here's my attendance list. We talked about this being a sort of um, time clock. Time clock. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have the business can have their employees. Scan in the morning. They need to get scanned to get their body temperature reading checked yep. anyway, and then it records the time that they did yep. get scanned. Yep. So give their temperatures, the time that they were off, um, their on time, if they were here, and the date. These people are not real people we have in our office, so there's not real times for them, but uh, this is where you do it. Now, I want to export this. It's, you know, Bay Day's coming, and we need to get everybody's time together. Again, I can export. That same folder. Time. Save. Okay, so that's my second list. Third list. 
No, that would open it up. Okay, me. well, let, let's, slow, let's slow down here because this is important. Yeah. So if, if you're using it as a time clock, now the, it's an Excel file now. Once again, let's see. So now this could be used by an HR person. Yeah. All right. So the, yeah, now the information's on Excel. Yeah, so now you can see it has the pictures, times, dates, just like I just yeah. talked about. So on time. Now, what if they say, okay, I only want to see who's late this week. Are you able to filter out your you can. searching? Let's go back to my... Back to my so you, the only way you can filter through this here would be statistics if you set that down. So statistics, right? Um, this is going to tell you late, on times, normal times, they didn't check in, that type of information. I can export yeah, that, that, That's important. Yeah, yeah. that's crucial because now you can go back and look at the records, right? Yeah. So this is like, you know, it's not necessarily payday, but you want to see how many times this person has been late, on time, things like that. One other thing is um, stats. And you can export that as well. Yeah, I'm exporting this little stats. Save it, should open up. I did. Back to my All right, here we go. That's. Yeah, I'll show the other one. There we go. Okay, so. Okay, so this yeah. the all right, so this is the if you guys page. see yeah now it now it's on Excel. Yeah, right. Now it's a stats page. And you know, of course, once it's on Excel, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. Um, but it gives you stats for that person. If you don't want to know times, you can know how many late early you know, check ins. So this like this device can do twenty two thousand base database. It, it keeps a hundred thousand records. So you have a lot of, I mean you're probably not gonna fill that up, but um, there's a lot of room in there for for records, yeah. Business, yeah. I mean, they could be larger companies. Yeah, so you can go back, you know, it's going to go back a year. You want to see how many times this person is late in a year. Yeah. You'll be able to pull that up. Let's go back to our DMS. There we go. So that was our attendance. Now, um, what if I need to check? What if, what if there is an update to this VMS or the firmware? Where do I update? So you're going to want to do it through the web page. We also have a update tool for it. Um, it allows you to do, if you have multiple devices, you can do multiple devices, make it a little easier. Is that a piece of software? It is a piece of software. Um, you can always check our. It's included. Yeah, you can always check our website for these tools and the actual firmware updates. If you're not sure if there's one, uh, so I'm going to. All right. So go back here. We want to do a upgrade. Right, upgrade real easy. Yeah. You choose a file, opens up your browser, a browser, select a file and upgrade. Very simple to do an update. Um, yeah, it's just selecting a file and updating. Mm -hmm. So we read through some of the questions. Is, yeah. All right, so that, well, that takes care of most of this, well, we, we covered all the settings on the browser and what the VMS does. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll just be answering questions. Yeah. And, um, that's where's the bulk of the webinar. Uh, can, uh, so yeah, feel free to keep typing in your questions. Um, can the RFID card reader be used as facial recognition? Yeah, so yeah, the RFID card could be used as a point of entry instead of face recognition or you can use them together. You yeah. have the option. Uh, we had a couple of questions earlier. Um, 
about this webinar being recorded. It is recorded and we're gonna upload this on YouTube after we finish today. So, okay. so just to recap, you can use this BN 2600 ACTC as a standalone device and also, you know, which, which will allow you to uh, automate the bo body temperature checks, you know, for really any place where it gets installed. Um, keep in mind, I mean, the installation here is very easy. Um, and you can connect it to the network and, sh and access a whole bunch more, more features that Mike showed us today, the, you know, facial, um, detection database, face attendance, um, setting up email alerts, um, a whole a whole lot more features. And we showed you guys a couple of ways to is to for the end users to get instant notifications if there is somebody with abnormal temperature that passes by the camera. Here's a good question. It says uh, what kind of background is best for the system to get a good recognition? That's another uh, awesome point with this camera you don't it doesn't need a background of a certain color it's gonna it's actually detecting heat from your skin so it doesn't you're good you can have this in an area like the lobby or something like that and not have to worry about having a certain background to to bring the, the person out more msrp for this device is twenty seven hundred dollars of course you guys are not uh you guys are a dealer we're not paying that, but it's $2,700 instead. Uh, can the camera overlay the temp onto a pick of the face? It, it, so it comes out the way uh, we showed, like on the export list. It's going to have the picture with the temperature and all that stuff to the right of it. On the actual screen itself, the actual device, it's going to show the picture and it's going to show your temperature above that, whether it was high or low. Um, so it doesn't really come out. On the picture, it's going to be an, an overlay on the actual device. All right, let's wrap it up. We ran a little long today, but I think it's we, we shared a lot of good information, especially if you're serious about reselling this, installing this. Um, you pretty much went over all the, the settings that you would want to know. Um, any questions? Um, go back to our slideshow. Feel free to. Here you go. Uh, drop us an email. Uh, our website has a specs sheets of our thermal solutions. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. We, we're going to upload this webinar. We've also already done a webinar on this exact product. Um, that one covered mainly, you know, the, the hardware highlights, um, you know, big picture uh, topics on this product. Today we went mainly went over setup uh, and setting up instant notifications. Um, please follow us on social media. Um, we got your our email address right there on the bottom. Uh, thank you again for joining us today, and we'll see you guys on the next webinar. We appreciate your time and attention. Thank you guys. Have a good one.